Okay, uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone who is listening uh, to today's webinar. My name is Amela Mimic and I am working as a BIM manager at Bexel Consulting. So for those of you who, who are today for the first time with us, I will make just a really quick and short introduction. So uh, this series of webinars is uh, created on the basis of the Bexel Manager step-by-step -step workflow guide, which we have released a couple of months ago and is located on our website, bexelmanager.com, on the user area. But first, if, if, if you would like to get a trial version of our software or an educational license, visit our Bexa Manager uh, web sub, website and click on the trial request. As I said before, you have the first one, the first option, which is standard trial. This is a 30 day trial version. And when you fill up the form, we will send you the license via email that was provided in the form. And the second one is the educational license, which is intended to support education. And is meant for all students, PhD candidates and university professors. Um, so both license, license come with the fully developed 3D BIM model. Uh, which is ready for 3D, 4D, and 5D BIM analysis. And also you will get the password for our Bexel user area. As you can see, uh, when you log to the Bexel user area, it is divided in three different sections. And if you activate the materials section, you can see that it is divided in several different folders. For example, under the manuals folder, you can find different documents which explain you how you can use the Bexel Manager software. The first one is the Bexel Manager step-by-step -step workflow guide, uh, which we have already mentioned and contains not only a PDF document, but also a complete model with all analysis and a start model with no analysis that you use to follow through the exercises which are described in the PDF document. And you have also several different documents which are translated in different languages. If you would rather watch different tutorials, you can activate the section tutorials and you can review the video videos that we have prepared. To read more about add-ins and Episcripts and how to use those two within the Bexel Manager suite, you can activate those two folders. And we have also prepared several different demo samples, which not only contain a sample, but also, for example, a PDF document which explains how you can import an ESE uh, IFC file and then create a 5D B model. And this is not the first webinar that we have released, so you can watch more about more webinars uh, within the webinar materials. And of course, if you would like to create a 5D B model, you can review the databases that we have prepared within the folder databases. So now we will go to the Bexel Manager interface. And uh, today's topics will be uh, lesson six and lesson seven from our Bexel Manager step-by-step uh, -step workflow guide. And as you can see this uh, interface, those two palettes are located in the left lower corner of, um, uh, of our interface. So this is the clash detection palette and the quantity takeoff. In previous lessons, we talked about selection sets, building explorer, custom breakdowns, properties palette, and uh, also we talked about the manage 
tab. So if you would like to uh, get some more information about those tools, you can uh, watch the previous lessons or you can also read about those topics in the step-by-step -step workflow guide. When you download uh, this document, which is called Bexel Step-by-Step Workflow Guide, you will see that it is divided in four different folders. And the files that you will need to follow through today's exercise are located in the Lessons folder, within the Lesson 6 and in the Exchange folder, and within the Lesson 7, within the Exchange folder. So now we will begin with Clash Detection. Clash Detection is currently empty because we haven't created a Clash job. And also, now we will start with four different exercises and in each of those exercises we will determine a different clash type. So to run a clash detection analysis, which is actually quite important in every single stage of uh, the project because it enables the user to avoid delays and additional costs on the construction site. So to perform our first uh, clash detection job, we will click on the command, which is located within the clash detection palette. Uh, and this is the command run clash detection. So click on it. And now you can see that the window clash detection opens. And first of all, you have to uh, uncheck certain selection sets or work, work sets that were checked and then you can start to select uh, groups from the left clash detection uh, groups window and then you choose actually uh, different uh, group of elements on the right clash detection groups window. So uh, what is actually a clash detection? This is an analysis where we compare if there are any clashes between two individual selected elements and a group of elements. And those groups can be smart selection sets or regular selection sets. And we have talked about this topic in lesson five. So for our first clash, uh, we, will create, we will choose a clash type which is defined as hard and we will use the selection set which is uh, located within the structural folder. And this selection set will be structural floors. And just to let you know, those selection set sets are located in the folder that I have mentioned before, so uh, within the Bexel step-by-step -step workflow guide, lessons, lesson six, and the exchange folder. Here you have the whole set of selection sets that we will use during the clash detection analysis. And those selection sets are as an BXF file. And in lesson four, we talked about how you can import a B XF file into uh, our software. So now we choose this selection set which is called uh, structural floors and uh, you click on it so it colors blue but that's not enough you have to check the box uh, which is accompanied by this selection set and we go to the right clash detection group and in this group we will choose the selection sets that are within the MI, MIP folder. And these are selection set air terminals and ducts, accessories, and fittings. So now we have chosen 
those two groups, which we will, uh, for which we will uh, perform a clash detection analysis. In the lower part of the clash detection window, you have the clash type, which is defined as hard, and so we leave it like this. In the tolerance window, you can define the dimension of your tolerance, but in this case, this will be zero. And then you have the option exclude clashes within group, and we will check the box in front of it. So to finish this clash analysis, we will click on the run command. And the software um, informs you that 31 distinct clashes were found. Just finish on the OK button and then finish again on the OK button within the clash detection window. As you can see, the results of our clash analysis are shown in the clash detection palette. So if you would like to review those clashes in the viewport, I highly suggest you to activate the clash view mode. And uh, now you have to select certain clashes within the list and you do that by clicking on control for example to select uh, a greater number of clashes and then they will appear in the viewport. As you can see we have selected more clashes and one group of elements is colored red and the other group is colored green. And also within the list, you can find information about every element, about every clash, which elements does it contain, on which floor it is located, and to which category and family those elements um, are actually a part of. So this is the clash view mode. If for, any other, uh, if for any reason, when you click this clash view mode, uh, you don't see those clashes, just go to the settings tab, which is located in the left upper corner of our screen, and then, then click on the general settings. So a window option appears, and here you have the tab which is called clash detection. And as you can see within it, you can define the colors of your elements, which are a part of certain clash. In our case, uh, one element is colored red and the other one is green. And here is the option render other elements. So I have chosen the dim option. If it would be, if the normal option would be selected, then the elements would be previewed as in the 3D view and you would not see uh, those elements that are a part of certain clash. So uh, if that happens, just go to the settings tab and general settings to um, define the option for the render other elements. So this is uh, the clash view mode that enables you to review uh, the clash a little, more, a little more detailed. Another thing that is really quite important is located on the right side of the screen within the clash detection palette. And these are the general information about your clash. So if you select a certain clash, you can, you can have a preview of it in the viewport and in the general information, you have also basic informations about those two elements. And for example, you can also add documents to a certain clash if needed. 
And then you also can create a viewpoint, which we will do at this point. Okay, so a viewpoint means that every time you scroll to this clash, this viewpoint will be uh, previewed. And as you create a viewpoint, an icon of an eye appears next to the clash. Okay, so now we will go to the second exercise where we will choose the clash type hard conservative. And to create another clash, just click on the run clash detection command and the window clash detection will appear. So you can see here that we have a section where you can define the name of your job because in the previous exercise we haven't done it done that the the job was or the clash was named job one so now you can either uh, define a new name and i will do that and i will choose the option exercise two and in the next same uh, step i will just rename the first job so as you can see the selection sets that we have previously selected are also selected now so first uncheck them and now we will choose the option the selection set which is located in the structural folder and these are the walls and uh no so i apologize framing and in the, in the right side of the group, we will choose the mechanical and plumbing elements. So we will choose every single selection set except electrical ones. So this selection set will not be a part of our analysis. Okay, then go to the clash type and define this clash as hard conservative. And also you can define the tolerance. In our case, this will be 0 0.05. And leave the box checked in front of the option exclude clashes within the group. So to run this clash detection analysis, just click on the run command. And as you can see, 531 distinct clashes were found within the job two or so called exercise two. So finish the process by clicking on the OK button. And now you can review those results within the clash detection palette. So for example, if you would like to examine clashes that are located on the second floor, just click on them and then activate the clash view mode. But I haven't selected all clashes from the second floor, just the clashes numbered from 7 to 10. And uh, now we will talk a little bit more about the level map. This is the palette which is located on the right side of the screen and it enables you to, to review the location of clashes in the uh, in the floor plan and if for any other reason those clashes do not appear here you can see them colored red you have here uh, command options and just check if those three options are marked so show clashes show clashing elements and show clashing edges 
And as you can see, as I move around those um, clashes within the viewport, also an icon moves in the level map because this icon is uh, actually the camera, the position of the camera. So the difference between hard conservative and hard uh, type of clash is that the second, the first one is a little bit thorough and a little bit uh, safer. So now we will actually use another type of clash, which is called clearance. But before that, we will choose the job one in the drop down list and we will use this command which is uh, this arrow next to the uh, command which contains three dots and we will use the option rename job and yet, as you can see the rename job window appears and we can define a new name for our job which will be called exercise one and finish the process by clicking on the OK button. So now you can see that we have changed the name. As no clashes are selected in the list and the clash view mode is activated, you can see that uh, we do not have a preview of any elements that are a part of a clash analysis. So now we will go to the third exercise where we will examine if our group, our two groups of elements are um, positioned so that the distance between them is big enough. So this is the clash type that we use when we want to check the distance between two groups and if it is big enough and uh, type of the clash is named um, clearance. So click on the run clash detection. And define the name of the exercise of your clash analysis, which will be called exercise number three. And please uncheck all of previously selected selection sets. And in the clash selection sets folder, we will use the structural walls selection set. Just make sure that it's not only selected, but also the box is checked. And in the right clash detection group, we will expand also the clash selection sets folder and then we will choose the ducts, accessories and fittings selection set and the pipes and fittings selection set. And under the clash type, we will choose the clearance. Okay. So now we will define the tolerance, which will be 0 0.05. And we will also leave the box checked in front of the exclude clashes within group. So as you can see, we have checked three different selection sets. We have defined the clash type as clearance the tolerance and now we can click on the command run. And as you can see, five distinct clashes were found within this clash analysis. Now click on the OK button within the clash detection window. And this exercise will appear in the clash detection list. So now I will again activate the clash view mode to analyze those clashes. 
And for example, now as they are selected in the palette, you can click on them with the right click. As you can see, you have here the option to select those elements. And if you click on the select elements, and then if you activate the selection info palette, which is located on the right side of the screen, next to the level mat, map, you will see that you have seven elements elected, selected. And now you can go to the selection tab, which is located next to the Manage tab in the left upper corner of the screen. And here you have the option which is called Copy Internal IDs of Elements. So now you can activate, for example, Notepad and you can paste those IDs and this information can be further on sent to the group of people who, are, who have to resolve those clashes. So this is actually also a useful information, but further on, we will also talk about the BCF manager. So if you would like to, for example, export uh, the export and report about this clash analysis. Just go to the command which is located on the right side of the palette and click on the command clash report. Within the window export clash report, you can define the parameters for the image because in the report you will have a preview of your a visual preview of your clashes. Then you can define if the level map will be shown in your report and also you can define several other parameters. So we will leave them as they are and we will click on the button export. And now we will click on the save button and uh, information window appears that asks you if you would like to open the output folder just click on yes and click on the report which is actually a pdf document so now you can review the report which contains general information uh, basic information about your uh, about uh, your clash detection just a note, because I have selected elements in the viewport, those elements are colored yellow in the report, but if you unselect those elements, they will appear red and green. Okay. So if we... Okay, so now you can see, as I have unselected the elements in the viewport, that the elements are cl colored red and green. And it's quite uh, thoroughly visual represented. Where the clashes are, which are the name of the elements, the families and the categories of the elements are also stated in the report, the location of, uh, so, uh, the story of the project, uh, the level building, and so on. So, this is uh, an option how you can create a clash report within the clash detection palette. So, the fourth exercise that we will create will be to look for duplicates in our project. So uh, the clash type is named duplicate bounds. So click on the run clash detection. And as you know, the clash detection window appears and define the name, which is exercise four. Uncheck all elements previously selected. And we will look for duplicates within the architectural folder. So click on the folder AR, 
and as you click on it all the selection sets within this folder will also be selected then go to the right clash detection group and click on this the same folder again and just check if only those selection sets are selected then go to the clash type and choose the option duplicate bounds as you can see the tolerance window is now deactivated and now we will uncheck the option exclude clashes within group because we are actually looking for clashes within one group of elements and then click on the command run So as you can see, four distinct clashes were found. Click on the OK button and then again within the clash detection window, click on the OK button and the exercise four will be uh, located within the clash detection palette. Okay, as I select those clashes, and activate the clash view mode, I will see the preview of those elements. And if I click with the right click on those clashes within the clash palette, clash detection palette, I will use the option select elements and then all. I will have a preview of those elements within the selection info palette which is located on the right side of the screen. So uh, now you can either copy those internal IDs or you can use the option BCF manager. Uh, the, as you all know, BCF manager is linked to the BIM call-up solution and as Pexel Manager supports BCF, you can also send clash detection analysis through the BCF Manager to the BIM call-up solution where any other participants on the project which use the BIM call-up can analyze the clash detection that you have sent to them. So to add some a clash detection or maybe selection sets to the BCF manager, just drag those, just select them and drag them to the BCF. And now you have the preview of all of those clashes from the list within the BCF manager. Of course, you have to um, you have to register on the BIM call-up uh, call and you have to create an account. But if you do that, then you have to, then everything you do in Bexel Manager and you use the BSF Manager for it, it will be an instant uh, seen in the BIM uh, call-up solution. So just to let you know that uh, we do support the BCF um, manager and if you would like to have to read about this topic more you can review the step-by-step -step workflow guide or we can also talk about this topic a little more a little more detailed in detail in further lessons so for now we have finished with the clash detection palette and we will move now to the quantity takeoff which is also located on the lower side of the screen. And now we will go to the clash detection to uh, deactivate the clash view mode. And we will also, for example, activate the properties palette or for example, the level map. Okay, so this is our project in the 3D view. So for the quantity tick uh, 
of palette, you have to uh, click on this tab in the left lower corner. And this tab actually Pilot actually enables the user to calculate quantities of individual groups of elements directly from the geometry of the BIM model. So because we haven't created a quantity of structure yet, it is currently empty. And as we have talked about custom breakdowns in uh, lesson four, I just have to mention that the creation of a custom breakdown uh, palette, uh, the custom breakdown structure and a quantity takeoff is actually similar. So for the first exercise, I would like to examine how much carpeting will we need for our project. So activate the building explorer, which is located on the left side of the screen and click on the elements tab and collapse the list. Within this list, uh, choose the category slabs and within it the architectural floor finish carpet family. To isolate this group of elements, click with the right click on the empty space and choose the option isolate selected elements. So those elements will be counted in our first quantity takeoff. Quantity takeoffs can be created blank or from selected elements. And as we have selected previously elements, we will choose the first option. So click on it and uh, a window opens that's really the same as almost the same as the window for creating a new custom breakdown so define the name of your exercise of your quantity takeoff which can be for example exercise one and as we have previously selected elements we will go to the command add breakdown rule so the first rule that we will add will be group by building level. So we will examine the quantities of this pre-selected family first by building levels, and then we will define the elements to group by family, although it's, it's only one family selected. And then we have the option quantities and click on it with the, right, with the right click and within the menu choose the option add quantity. So a window select quantity is opened, appears and in the filter section defined the property uh, the quantity you would like to add. In our case, this will be the area property. Or you could just um, enter an abbreviation for a certain area in the filter section to find a, uh, a quantity um, even quicker. So in this lower part of the select quantity window, you have a name that is displayed and you have also an aggregate fun function. So you can look an average, maximum, minimum or con count, but I want to examine the whole um, amount of the area property. And I will click on the OK button. So now you can also define a color coded you, you can also set a color coding rule to either of those rules, which we know from creating a custom breakdown. And we will add the color coded rule to the first breakdown rule, which is group by building level. And finish the process by clicking on the OK button. So now, if you scroll down to the quantity takeoff, you can see 
the, on the right side of the palette, there is our structure of the quantity takeoff, which is first divided in floors and then by families. And if you would like to examine those, this quantity take off in the 3D color coded view, just click on it. And as you can see, uh, one group is colored gray and the other one is beige. And is, as I scroll through those elements, an information box, which is actually the tooltip tool appears. And we talked about how you can deactivate this tooltip. So click with the right click in, on empty space and in the contextual menu, choose the viewport option and just activate the tab tooltip option and click on the option uh, and uncheck the option use tooltip. So, uh, be sure that when you activate the 3D color coded view, that the viewer mode is defined as quantity takeoffs because we are now dealing with quantity takeoffs structures. In the second exercise, we will create um, a blank quantity takeoff within the quantity takeoff palette. But before we do that, I would just like to show you one more command within the quantity takeoff. For example, if I click on the parameter second floor within our exercise one, you have here a command which is titled selection and click on it and you can choose options like for example select elements and those elements will be selected in the viewport and you can examine them further on. You can isolate or hide them if needed. Okay so now we will go to the exercise two and we will create a blank quantity takeoff. Define the name, which will be exercise number two. And in this uh, quantity takeoff, under the type section, we will choose selection sets as our basis. So we will use the clash selection sets and under the architectural folder, you have, for example, the architectural floors selection set and architectural walls. So in this case, click on the use selection command and you will see the total amount of your elements which are a part of um, your breakdown uh, or should I say quantity takeoff and then you can add a rule where you divide this quantity takeoff first by building level and then you can add for example a family and then you can add quantities as area and for example length and you can select any other uh, quantity you would like to examine for a certain group and here's also a question uh, an option which is called uh, quantities uh, under the quantities option, which is called add count, which actually defines that you will count, that software will count elements within the groups. So now click on the generate command and you have the preview of uh, your quantity take off. So if you don't like this structure, you can always reset the tree 
and you can for example move those added uh, breakdown rules up or down and if you click on the generate command again you will see that the structure of this quantity take off is changed so now reset the tree um, change the structure again you can add a color coding, uh, coding rule and just finish the process by clicking on the OK button. Okay, so now you can see our quantity take off visually represented in the 3D color coded view and you can also examine the families from our selection sets which are divided by levels and you can examine the areas and the length and also the count for a certain family. So in the next exercise, we will use a discrete property, which is, as you all know, master format property, because this property was used during various BIM analysis in previous lessons. And we will show you the process of how to create a quantity takeoff based on a master format property. So click again on the new command within the quantity takeoff and choose the option blank quantity takeoff. So define the name of this exercise X as exercise number three. And then within this type section choose the option categories and we will choose the category walls now click on the use selection command and first we will for example we want to divide this quantity takeoff based on the building levels and then we will add a new rule so you click on the right click on the project you choose the option add rule and then you choose the option discrete property okay and the select discrete property window opens and in the filter section, enter the mass abbreviation and click on the filter selection to choose the master format property and click on the OK button to add it. And you can add another rule which will be group by family. So for example, we will set the color coding rule for the master format property and we will click on it and then we will add quantity for example area and also we will add count so now we can click on the command generate and we have a preview of our structure quantity takeoff structure within the create quantity takeoff window so click on the ok button and within the quantity takeoff palette you have the exercise three so as you expand this list, you can see that the structure of the quantity takeoff is first divided by levels, building levels, then by the master format property, 
then by the families which contain this value 033113 for the master format property and be uh, and under the family you have also the ids for certain element and for each of this family you you have also the quantity which we have looked for this is the area defined in square meters and the count so how many elements have this master format value for example and uh, this is also the preview of your quantity tick of you can show all elements and here you have within the 3d color coded view you have the command show only colored ele elements which you can turn on or turn off and if you turn off this option you will see not only the colored elements but the whole project and if you would like to uh, review only those elements which are a part of uh, your quantity takeoff you can click on the command show only colored elements so in custom breakdowns we talked about how you can create a template which which you can then import to another custom breakdown and the same thing goes to uh, applies to the quantity takeoffs palette which means that this quantity takeoff will be used to create a template so within the right side of the quantity takeoff palette you have the command which is named templates and click on it and then click on the option save so uh, now define the name of your breakdown template and the location i will choose the desktop and i will save this location uh, this template so in the next step i will create a blank i will create a quantity takeoff and i will choose the category walls within the building explorer and i will activate the 3d view and i will isolate this category by clicking with the right click in the empty space i will choose the option isolate and then selected elements so now uh, my category of walls is isolated and previously selected so i will choose within the quantity take off palette the command from selected elements and i don't know if you remembered but you can examine the exercise three which is our previously selected quantity take off and here it's stated that it has 633 elements so those uh, this category walls was chosen within the quantity takeoff window because we have created a blank quantity takeoff and within the type we uh, we chose the category walls in for this quantity takeoff we used the building explorer where we have chosen the category walls and we have isolated them in the viewport and we have created a quantity takeoff on the basis of selected elements so as you can see you can use several different approaches by creating a quantity takeoff and the count of selected elements defined elements for a certain quantity takeoff will be the same so uh, now we will choose the option import qto from template and the breakdown template a template opens and we will click within the import break breakdown template file window 
on the open button. And as you can see, the template was imported and the structure of this exercise, which will be defined as exercise four, is the same as it was in the exercise three, where we have exported or created the template. So click on the OK button to finish the process of creating a custom breakdown. A quantity takeoff, sorry. And as in the template, we have defined also a color coded rule. Uh, this color coded uh, rule also applies to exercise four. If for any other reason you don't like the colors within the quantity takeoff, you can also edit this. So go to choose a certain quantity takeoff from the list, click on the edit command, and then as you have a preview of your um, quantity uh, takeoff structure, you can collapse the list. And then for example, you can click on this value master format, which is the first one, and a command choose color activates. So click on it. And then you can change the color, for example, to, I don't know, violet, and finish the process by clicking on the OK, or should I say black? And this is the way how you can change the colors of your quantity takeoff, which was set by the color coding rule. Um, if you click on the OK button, the change will appear in the 3D color coded view within your quantity takeoff. OK, so now you can see that we have created four different exercises, which can also be organized uh, by folders. And if you would like to, for any reason, create a new folder within the quantity take off, you can click on the new folder command. You add the name of the folder, for example, QTO exercises and then just click on the OK button. Uh, this folder appears in the QTO palette and it's colored gray because it's empty. And if you would like to drag some exercises into the folder, just select them and drag them to the folder. And this is the way how you can also edit your list of quantity takeoffs. And we have shown the command edit. You can also delete a certain folder or exercise, but then this quantity takeoff is lost. So on this on the base of the exercise four, we will create a report. So in the right side of the screen, you have the command export. And here you have the parameters for the report which will be exported. You can choose the styled report, the breakdown structure, the flat table, and I will use all of those parameters. And I, after I define the parameters of the exported report, I will just click on the export command. And now we will open this report. So as you can see, the first sheet is the styled report, which contains the name of the level where the elements of this quantity, uh, quantity takeoff are located, which have the value, for example, 033113 for the master format property. Then you have the quantity for area. And if you would also define length and volume, those quantities would also be listed here. 
and defined by uh, square meters, meters, and so on. And then you have also the number of those elements which have this certain master format uh, value. So this report is really thorough and visually nice because it enables you to review, to visually review the quantities that you are searching. Then you have the option of the flat table. Then you have also the sheet which is called breakdown structure, which has the same shape of the quantity takeoff structure and then also the last one contains also the elements. And as you can see, this report is created as an Excel file. So close now this Excel file. And for the last exercise, we will create a quantity takeoff, which may be a process that is a little bit longer, but we will create a QTO based on the master format classification. Uh, so on the basis of selection sets, of group of selection sets, which are imported, which were imported. Because I would just like to show you uh, that if you have in your quantity takeoffs, elements that are distributed, distributed to more um, groups, as for example, or more selection sets, the software actually notifies you. So then you have to check if the user has to check if um, there is no, uh, there are no duplicated quantities. So I will show you through this, pro I will guide you through, through this process and I will show you uh, this notification. Click on the blank quantity takeoff and define the name as it is exercise five. And then click on the option under the type selection set. We will use the master format classification and then uh, we will use the use selection command and then click on the add breakdown rule where you choose the option group by selection set. And in the first level you will choose this folder, these uh, folders within the master format classification, which are on so-called first level and just click on them and then click on the OK button within the selection sets and folders. So in the next step, we will also add a, a, a breakdown rule, which is group by selection set, and we will choose the folders which were within those folders we have previously selected. So as you can see, there are a lot of different folders and selection sets, but you can see that your quantity takeoff structure can have a lot of different groups of elements, which is actually a positive thing. So then you can click on the OK button. I haven't selected all of the subfolders. And in the uh, next step, we will also add rule and then we will choose the uh, option selection set. And we will click on the selection sets which are located within this folders. So I know we are running out of time. This is the last exercise. So just be patient. And just click on those selection sets and add them to your quantity takeoff.
and finish the process by clicking on the OK uh, button. You can add, for example, a quantity. Add count and you can add also quantity, for example, area. Click on the filter, use the area, OK then add a certain property as a certain quantity as for example length and then click on the filter option and then click again so generate this structure and scroll down and as you can see in the exercise five, you have a group which is called multiple selection sets. So these are the elements. Uh, this is a group which contains elements that are divided in several different groups. And you have to check if this is actually a mistake. And in that case, the quantities will be duplicated or this is the case, or, or this is not a mistake, because sometimes when we have, for example, walls, the walls are used for glatting and painting. And this the same elements were, are distributed in different, in two different selection sets. And this, that's actually not a mistake. So uh, how you can actually move this multiple selection sets option, you go to the, exercise five within the quantity takeoff you click on the edit command and then the reset tree and here you have the option enable elements multiposition and then you click on the display elements distributed in multiple position and as you generate uh, this this group this quantity take off and click on the OK button. Uh, this multiple selection should be uh, should disappear, but the software warns you that you have uh, 122 elements that are on multiple positions. So I would like to say that this was the last exercise regarding the quantity takeoff palette. I know that today's lesson was a little bit longer and I would like to thank you because um, you stayed until the end and I can see that you had some uh, different questions uh, which were also answered uh, by my co-workers and I would just like to Thank you for listening and uh, have a nice day further on. So uh, goodbye.